Last summer, as Europe's refugee crisis escalated dramatically, Angela Merkel received plaudits for her leadership in extending a welcoming hand to those fleeing conflict and misery. Now the German Chancellor is under fire for a situation that many say is out of control, not least increasingly vocal critics within her own Christian Democratic Party. Will the defining moment of Merkel's chancellorship also be the cause of her downfall? With me to discuss the plight of the German Chancellor are Nina Schick, Communications Director at the think tank Open Europe, and Gideon Rachman, the FT's Chief Foreign Affairs Commentator. Nina, there's been lots of reasons given for this sudden, this rather dramatic, uh, uh, quick change in sentiment towards Merkel on this issue. What do you see as the reason for how things have changed so dramatically? Well, Merkel has come under tremendous pressure from all sides of the political spectrum, including from her coalition partners on the centre-left, and including her Bavarian sister party, who are obviously feeling the brunt of some of the migration crisis right now. It's become increasingly clear amongst not only the political scene, but amongst the people, that they don't believe Merkel's sentiment, we will manage, as she's repeatedly said since the start of the migration crisis. They think the government has no control so Merkel is furiously back rowing now and trying to pass a series of new measures through the Bundestag. But even if these measures are passed, including quicker deportation of criminal asylum seekers, the question still remains, what do you do with the 1.1 million people who've now arrived? How do you deport them? And for those who are staying, how do you integrate them into German society? So this has kicked off a massive existential debate in German society as a whole. Yeah, and I would add that there's also a sense of ongoing crisis because there are about 3,000 people arriving a day in Greece at the moment, a lot of whom will end up in Germany. So I think if Merkel were able to say, OK, you know, it's a huge number, it's 1.1 million, but now it's stabilised and we can cope. That's one thing, but this sense that actually people are still coming, is there's no sense of control. How serious do you think then this is for her politically? I mean, obviously, there's, within, the, within the Berlin Beltway, there's massive amounts of rumour and speculation and talk that, you know, Schäuble is waiting in the wings, the, the, the German finance minister. It's, is, it's, it's very serious, and I don't think in her entire tenure as Chancellor we've seen such a ch serious threat to Merkel, um, not only from within her own party and her Bavarian sister party, but also with the rise of the AFD. And this is tradition, a party that was founded as an anti-establishment, an anti-Euro party, but throughout the migration crisis, it's now become an anti-immigration and refugee party. And they are looking to sweep up in the regional elections and they are becoming quickly established as the third political party in Germany after Merkel's CDU, CSU and the center-left SPD. So we will see this in the regional elections in March quite clearly. Gideon, from your perspective, is this now a leader under... Well, I mean, I, yeah, threat? absolutely. I mean, I think that... Um, she, it's very hard, obviously, to predict exactly how it will, will play out, but the objective circumstances are almost guaranteed to create some sort of political crisis. You have a lot of unhappiness in Germany. You have a situation that's under, out of control. So that even a leader who started with so much credit in the bank, Merkel, I mean, I remember being there during the last general election, and she was so trusted that the, the poster was simply a picture of her hands. <laughs> you know, like safe, in, safe in Merkel's hands. And that's just crumbled away now. Now, how it'll play out, we'll see. But there is a crisis brewing. And how do you think she's perceived outside Germany among other EU leaders, many of whom have been angry at the, the, the stance she took on refugees or haven't have, have resisted her call to well, follow? Well, it's very interesting, actually, because last night I was at a discussion in... Uh, about, amongst British people who follow Europe about the whole Brexit negotiations and somebody was saying we've got to try and get a deal with Merkel in the next month while her authority is still intact. Mm -hmm. She's still the most important leader in Europe. I think that is the case partly because of who she is, partly because of who Germany is. But her, her authority clearly is crumbling a bit and, um, and I think that she's got also a major diplomatic hassle because She's had terrible relations with Southern Europe over the Euro. Now she's got terrible relations with Eastern Europe over the refugees. She's got a problem with Britain over Brexit. The Franco-German relationship is, is you know, been trouble for some time. So she's looking a bit isolated. Never, even at the heights of the Eurozone crisis, we haven't seen such a big divide in the EU as a whole. And a lot of that is to do with the EU's plan supported by Germany to have a quota to share out the refugees, which has been an abysmal failure. 
Can I just ask you quickly, Nina, how you think, because I mean, you at Open Europe have done a lot of work on the, uh, the, the preparation for a referendum on British membership of the EU. How do you think this is going to play in that c campaign? Well, I think this very clearly, very, very clearly has an impact on the UK's EU referendum debate, even though there's a conflation of issues going on here. So the UK obviously isn't a member of Schengen. The UK isn't, has an opt-out from EU asylum policy, but still, if, in terms of PR, when you see the EU struggling to deal with these thousands, of, millions of people coming in, it makes the UK electorate want to vote out and leave the EU. Finally, Gideon, you made a very bold prediction at the start of 2016, and you said you didn't think Merkel would still be in office by the end of this year. Yeah, because that was actually before the Cologne attacks, which I think really did change the mood. Um, but, I, yeah, I, I mean, obviously, I, I'd be foolish to resile from that now because things have got a lot worse for her over the last three months. Um, I think unless she can find some way of stabilising the situation, uh, I, I think she may well go this year, yeah. Last word, Nina. I agree. Um, but, I mean, the one thing that Merkel has going for her is that she, you know, came from the Cole School of Thought and bopped all the successors very quietly on the head. So there isn't an apparent successor to take over. But if things go keep on going the way, the way they are, I think Merkel is, she's certainly fighting for her life right now. Political life. Okay. Nina Schick, Gideon Rachman, thank you very much. Until the next time, goodbye.